pick for him, but I feel a very strong one, especially against the likes of Fox. Game one is going to be bringing us yeah. to Pokemon Stadium 2, and I feel like these characters kind of, they do the same things, they just have different disadvantage states as far as, like, when they're getting comboed and what they want to do for getting themselves back to, uh, to ground zero. But nonetheless, we'll see how this set itself goes out as he starts to uh, take a bit of the damage. But it's going to be a lot of these trades, a little bit of pokes. It's not going to be until someone really takes control of the stage, starts to really push deep to the ledge, where we're going to start to see who's taking the reins on the set. And already, uh, already honestly, stepping up to the cage and had tweak a little bit on the ropes for, with his Ridley and still keeping on the pressure. Get Illusion in that advantage situation, just covering a lot of those roll options. But Tweak battling back, showing that he has a pocket Ridley. It's probably the first time I've ever seen him use this character. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> like, to my lying. knowledge, this is his first <laughs> tournament with Ridley. Yeah. Uh, I heard other people saying that he's been practicing it. It's a character that he likes, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. But this is its first premiere appearance. And I'm personally a fan of Ridley, even if right now he's flying into the scoreboard in the back. Honestly, going to be breaking that first blood. And it's not too hard to see when you know that New York has a lot of Ridleys. Yeah. So, that knowledge of the character and counterplay is there, regardless of how he gets an opportunity to play against the likes of Dre, against Rapture, against Face. Like, people know what to do against this character because they're forced to know what to do against this character. That's yeah, going to be tying things up. Tweak with a big play. It looks like Odyssey is going to start running away with it just a little bit, but that's why Tweak is one of the best players in the world. When he needs to come up with a play, he always seems to have the knack for finding it. But on the flip side, you know, one of those things that we like to talk about, especially when it comes underdog versus one of the top players in the world, sometimes if you can't just beat the player directly, you got to beat the character. And as you were mentioning, I'm pretty sure, you know, as familiar as Tweak is against playing against Fox is with his other main characters, it's probably a new experience overall. And, you know, honestly, just going to work and putting on a clinic right now, making Tweak kind of regretting going into this matchup with a character who's not as experienced with, I would say. But he has him off stage. Oh, he goes directly on stage. No stop to the ledge. Kind of caught Tweak sleeping just a little bit. We got this early pull start time. People just starting to wake up, and maybe Tweak kind of victim him to it a little bit. Hey, Adi had his, his Wheaties this morning. He's ready to roll, man. People like, stop at that 11 a.m. Uh, start, but hey, listen, you want to win, you're ready for it. And honestly, right now, Tweak's going to win. It's looking like this Ridley's going to have to hit the bench. Yeah. We got to put that one back into the uh, back into the Pokeball on this Pokemon Stadium to you. <laughs> But, uh, you know, it's yeah, it's not looking good for him, man. Oh, there's that Nair. All right, all right, Twitter, let's go. Start telling your friends. It's uh, the champion is, the, you know, one of the contenders for World's Best. Is on the ropes, already down game one. I'm sure we're going to see a character switch, and that'll be the real test. But Now, I'm curious to see on whether or not we're going to see uh, a few of the more select characters from Tweak, like his Wario, as you were mentioning, potentially yeah. his Donkey Kong. Uh, Donkey Kong, in particular, I feel like would be good to fight off against... Um, uh, Young Link? Yeah, word. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. That's what we do these days? Oh, I bet. Point hats out of the, uh, tricks out of the hat, no problem. Huh. Yo, my man hit a sub goal for these characters. <laughs> this is about. But you cannot sleep on Young Link. This is another character that, even though he doesn't get the most representation, is generally agreed to be a very strong character. Very easy to zone with, mm -hmm. easy to confirm his kills. He can contest space well. What are you thinking about this switch? That's going to be interesting. You know, Young Link is able to put a lot of pressure surprisingly up close, but also has those projectiles for that zoning game. So you could see a player like Tweak that's able to get really flashy and have all kinds of optimized big damage combos and clutch situations. You could see some really flashy, you know, arrow to arrow up special situations. But on the flip side, you know, it's it's always interesting to see just because I feel like Fox as a character is pretty good at rushing down Young Link. It's almost as if he counterpicked himself just a little bit. So I'm not under I'm not 100 percent sure what the thought process is. And Odyssey, you know, kind of proving me right a little bit at the early goings coming in with the lead. I'm also curious to see like what the reasoning behind this character is. Like things to be working out really well early on, but. <laughs> Did that recover? All right, I'll yeah. hold on a moment. Some drift. Uh, that, that character has some drift on it, looking like, you know, he has, like, that Adu Deku leaf going on, or <laughs> I guess that's the wrong game, but I don't know. Whatever makes him fly faster, Bunny Hood. I mean, nonetheless, he's still staying alive until Boot to the Head says otherwise. Adi's still rolling. Plenty of momentum. That was an unfortunate boomerang coming out from Tweak. Maybe not as much experience with the character, but he gets that down to the top air. Bread and butter is going to keep you in the game. Doesn't matter if you're the top player in the world or me picking up the controller. If you got those bread and butters unlocked, you're going to be able to compete. Down to the upper, seals it out, and we're even coming into the second stock. 
And of course, that you know, when it's even, it does favor that underdog player. You get, you know, as the top players, you start feeling that pressure. The crowd starts building around you. The tension starts building. Your heart starts pounding. You don't want to be upset early. And as long as Odyssey's really able to keep himself into the game, he can keep that pressure on. You know, it's one of those notions which we may not know about Odyssey or not know well enough about how he's performing in this game. So they have picked into these characters thinking he could just breeze his way through potentially lower level play, but he's finding himself a game down in a best of three set. So this young Link, if put in the work, he's going to have to keep on doing that. It secures another stock for him. But not that much damage builds up. But yeah, he's going to have to figure out a different way to approach in on this. Yeah, that up B out of shield, very pivotal. It's going to, you know, it's got to keep Odyssey a little bit honest. He's been putting on so much shield pressure. But if you hit Young Link's shield too much, that up B, it combos into all kinds of stuff forever. Yeah, one thing I've noticed that Odyssey has been forced to stop using is Fox Illusion. We saw him using it to tech chase against Ridley and mm -hmm. to escape a bit of the pressure or even approach on Tweak's Young Link. But it's getting punished hard every time Odyssey starts swinging on shield and doesn't have a plan. And now we're looking at the potential of the reverse two stock from what we saw earlier. The body's not able to clean this up. Yeah, it's starting to slip away from him just a little bit, but he is in a game lead. You know, the more I think about it, too, maybe Tweak was onto something that I was not on the early stocks. Not just because he has the lead, but, you know, from a momentum standpoint, you had Odyssey going in so hard against Ridley. And by going Young Link, he's kind of forced Odyssey out of his comfort zone, slowed the pace of the matchup down. You see a lot Odyssey having to flash shield so much and really work his way into the match instead of, you know, being able to run in for free. And intentions building those back air pressure. He wants that last stock so desperately. Doesn't get it quite yet. Goes really deep with the neutral air. This is trouble down there. Oh, big, big edge guard situation from Tweet coming out and picks up that second game for his trouble. Yeah. Missing that that soft hit of Nair in that edge guard. Yeah. That's what screwed Adi over there. But hey, going into game three. And now that Tweet is taking back the momentum, I'm curious to see what Adi's gonna respond with. Are we gonna see the full Fox run? Palutena going to come out because Palutena is able to fight Young Link very well. Right. She, traditionally, she's been able to fight against zoning characters. And even though Tweak's showing a bit more aggro play, it's a lot more just a hit confirmed. Like, let me just swing on you. The projectiles are just helping me to that end goal. I feel like Palutena is still able to play against that. On top of that, maybe we'll see a different stage. Pokemon Stadium 2 wasn't looking too hot for Adi with Fox. Even though he was able to traverse it very well against Ridley, Young Link, a bit of a more spry character, able to control that space very well. And I heard the Palutena switch come through. Uh, Twix staying with Young Link. Let's see, reflectors on deck. Uh, Palutena with her own uh, little projectile game. Yeah, it's going to be tough, you know. Let's see who's got the stronger game overall. Young, Twix Young Link or Odyssey's Palutena. They're opening up game three. Upset alert if uh, Odyssey's able to rack up some early damage and get a kill. Let everyone let your friends know in the chat. It's happening. He's got the backers off stage already. Look at that young PG stats at at the ready. Smashville, I feel, is a really good pick for Adi. I feel like he performs very well on the stage. In general, I feel that Palutena can navigate the stage very well and more importantly, control it. We're going to see a lot of that. Auto reticle doesn't just target the character. It also targets items on the stage. So boomerang, bomb, those are items that are going to get picked off very quickly by auto reticle. And it's not that big of a commitment, especially from full stage from Adi. So long as he's in range to activate auto reticle, it's going to be a very good anti zone tool, I feel. And we're dead even here at the first stock. Both players, the percent's climbing. Who's going to get that first stock? That's going to be such a huge statement. Could you imagine, honestly, getting this first stock and the, you know, the tension? You can already see the crowd building up behind watching, reading on the hometown hero, trying to make the underdog upset. If y'all paid attention to the crowd count as we started this set, there's a crowd of great total like two people, <laughs> and it was, it was you and me, Lux. But now, the crowd's starting to build. Everyone's got their eyes. Tri-State knows. Odyssey. They recognize that talent. They know that he's got the potential. He's just got to be able to clutch it out. Not that just the first one in game three, but he's got to really make this first stock last and he's not going to do that with the forward air confirm. Yeah, forward air one and an up smash, tried and true. Picks up that second stock and Tweak just doing everything he can. You know, he's battling back off the ropes. He's not out of it yet. If you want to beat the champ, you got to knock him out. And Odyssey working to do just that has Tweak off stage and putting in Palutena work. But Tweak starting to open him up. He tries to confirm a platform combo. And in the tussle, it's it's uh, going right back to neutral. No one getting too much out of that exchange. 
but Tweak able to keep it even. One thing Adi's got to be careful of is how well he navigates the platform. The solo platform for Smash Bros. is very strong positioning for Young Link because even though we've seen Young Link kill it uh, a lot more off just the regular hit confirm at the very high percentages, so it seems natural that he's able to kill the way that he has, but if Tweak starts getting his combos up on the platform, there's a lot less space that he has to traverse. That's a lot earlier Adi could potentially be losing the stocks. Yeah, he's, he's moving now in neutral. You see so many short hop uh, fast falls, kind of trying to keep the timing mixed up from Tweak. Uh, just be careful with the down tilt. Confirm. Oh, there's an out special. And Tweak is taking the lead. He's got a lead finally in the set. And he's going to go for more. Gets that out special. Down tilt. Young Link's happening. Oh, my God. The confirms. 65, 75 unanswered. Tweak roaring through. And, you know, the, the upset alert. It might be starting to come off a little bit. But don't count Odyssey just yet. He's just got to pick up one. Hit, keep him out, keep himself in the game with the stock. So we've been lapped in percentages. Things seem to be cracking away for Adi. If he can clean up the stock, camp it hard, find Tweak in a very unfortunate position, it's still doable, but the story's looking grim right now for him as he tries to come in from the ledge. Tweak doing a great job of just forcing the approach. And talking about this earlier, when we saw Jen's power time, but Power Time has very noticeable approach options. They're not the greatest. And one hit confirm was all Tweak needed. I don't think he took damage on that nah. after 96%. Like, oh my god. He that saw like that double Odyssey zero was <laughs> He ripped that set from the jaws of defeat. Yeah. So he takes it 2-1 over Odyssey. Odyssey's going to have to bring that further on through the loser's bracket. But listen, that's why Tweak is, Tweak is one of the top seeds of this tournament. That's why he's projected to win. Like, man's good. Yeah. And I feel like his skill does all the talking for him. Yeah, but I think some of the rumor going through on, on the venue is like some of his, even his pool, Sets there are a couple close calls going through, like some people oh, kind of pushing him, uh, so. pushing him to the brink. Maybe it's one of those situations where Tweak is having a little bit of trouble downloading initially, but once he gets the download patch in, it's smooth sailing from there, just as we saw in that game three. So, quality win overall for Tweak, but definitely a good showing for Odyssey. Excited to see what he's able to bring coming into, you know, uh, coming into the losers bracket. Unfortunately, he's down there, but that's you know he'll battle his way through just yeah, like he battled against Tweak.